Okay, hello guys. I've had uh, several people ask me for more information and details review on this uh, Volcon Grunt. So I'm going to do my best to fill you in on some more details. First, a little background. I have uh, been riding motorcycles ever since I was, I think, around 13 years old. ATVs, motorcycles. I'm now 50. The big 5-0 this last year, so... Over those years, I have no idea how many how many off-road bikes I've ridden, probably 15 or so I've owned. And um, currently, uh, this Chinese Expect motorcycle over here, this is my brother's, he had it shipped here. I've got the Volcon Grunt here, and other than that, I've got this 2007 Honda Rancher. That's all I have for off-road vehicles at the moment. Um, so I got this Grunt because I wanted to be able to navigate our very rough, dusty, rocky roads. We live a mile up a dirt road. And getting down to the mailbox is um, a bit of a chore in my Tesla. So, I thought I'd try this thing out, since I like electric vehicles. We have solar on the house, so we, we overproduce a little bit on our solar power. So, the thought of having free, basically free fuel is, you know, appealing. So, I uh, when I saw this come out on the internet, I decided to put down my $100 and reserve one. And actually, to be honest, I didn't have high hopes that it would ever show up, but it did. And now let's, uh, I'm going to fill you in on a few details. I think, I don't know how much I showed already. It's got the LED headlight. And let me fire this thing. I will fire it up. Yeah, right. Uh, power switch over on the right. It does have hydraulic brakes front and rear. It has this four-way switch on the side. To my knowledge, the best, I, I mean, the instructions that came with this are quite minimal. The OK button lets you select. If I hold in the OK once it's booted up, I'm holding it now, and it will go to stroll mode. If I click it again, it goes to explore. Click it again, it goes back to sport. And then it just cycles through these three modes. Stroll mode from my testing will give you, if I remember right, uh, somewhere around 38 amps maximum draw from the battery. I believe that's right, 38 amps. And on the flattened level, you can do maybe hmm, 21 miles an hour. Explore mode will let you draw, I believe, up to 78 amps, plus or minus one or so. That'll get you up to about 31, 32 miles an hour on the level. And then sport mode will allow it to draw up to 110 amps. And that'll get you up to your full max speed, which they claim 40. I've never actually had it up to 40, I don't think. I think it'll do it if it has enough space, but this thing really likes to cruise at about 25 to 30. And if you rotate this, if you see this, I'm rotating it. This basically has three screens. There's the default, which shows your battery at the top and what mode you're in. Rotate it one click to the right, and it's, there's no extra info here. It's just stroll, explore, sport, or neutral. And I do not believe if I click these, yeah, it doesn't do anything on that screen. Left, right, up, down, nothing. If I click the OK button, it will scroll through them. I like sport mode because full speed's good. Um, if I rotate to the right one more time, I get the third screen, which shows me battery percentage. And what's that say? 65.1 volts, I think it says. Yeah. 0.4 amps. This is just... And then this, this is basically just your battery. 
it's a uh, one, two, three, four, five, ten blocks, and it just subtracts blocks as you go through the battery. Oh, it going went back to neutral because if you just sit parked in, I'm gonna say in gear, but it's not in gear. But if you sit parked in drive mode for a while, it looks like it goes to neutral. Probably a safety thing. Um. What should I talk about next? Oh, one thing that I um, found out the hard way. Once this battery level gets down to 10%, it doesn't matter what mode you're in, you are limited to a maximum of, I think it was 7 amp of draw, 7 or 8 amps. Now, 7 or 8 amps on the flattened level will get you a whopping 5 to 6 miles an hour. Coming up a hill, driving, trying to drive up a hill, you're not going to make it. It is enough power to pull itself up a hill if you walk along beside it, though. So that bottom 10% of the battery, turtle mode, limp mode, whatever you want to call it, it's only good if you're on the flattened level or basically walking it up a hill to get back to where you can charge. Now, as far as charging, I showed you this. This is just magnetic neomignium or whatever the pronunciation is for these super strong magnets. Um, all right, let me, um, this is, I've got it disconnected now. There's a strap around the battery here. This strap goes around, you grab it on this side feed this through it and you got velcro that just you know holds the battery in place and i do believe that is space for a second battery down inside here there's lots of space so i have that you have to pretty much you have to unstrap that in order to to move the battery back enough to get the charger on here which is a real nuisance and another thing i don't like this plug is, this is your power to the bike from the battery. And it's weather sealed. It has obviously places to uh, put a screw on either side to fasten it in there. It doesn't come with screws, it's just a friction fit. But in order to plug this charger in, you have to dis, not disconnect, but loosen the strap so you can pull it back. And you can see that's a keyed plug. So you have to figure out the right way to plug that in there. Plug it in. Let it charge. And this is the charger sitting over here. When it gets fully charged, there's a relay inside this box. And it just clicks on, clicks off. Clicks on, clicks off. So it's... Maybe every one or two seconds, it's clicking on and off. Um, to me, that's a horrible design. Because, <sighs> you know, a relay, it's a moving part in there, and it's going to wear itself out just clicking on and off once the battery's full. So you forget to, you forget that you're charging, and you come out and leave it on overnight. I mean, it's clicked thousands of times on and off. That's not good, in my opinion. Um... Well, so it does have a brake light. I think I showed that. Let me turn it back on. Um, there's your tail light. Let's see if I can reach it and show it all at the same time. There's my tail light. There's brake light. Um, suspension wise, this seat, it looks soft, but it is like sitting on a board comfortability wise i mean after half an hour on this thing you are ready to get off for the rest of the day it is absolutely miserable to sit on as is this other bike though i should say this chinese bike this is why my brother has this little uh it's almost like one of those purple mattress thingies to sit on he says that helps a lot he suggested it on this one too 
But the suspension wise, I'm heavy. Uh, this bike's supposed to be able to hold, what did they say, like 400 or 440 pounds or something? I'm right at 300. Yeah, I'm a big guy. When I sit on this, it's uh, suspension is, you know, probably three fourths compressed, which probably doesn't help the ride a whole lot. I have not yet turned this down. I need to, you know, add some preload to the, the rear shock. I don't know, ideally I maybe even get a slightly stiffer spring for it, but the front end seems to be fine. There's plenty of travel when I'm riding it. I mean, this isn't a high-speed bike anyway. It's just a slow putt around, get you where you need to go, good on the trail. Um, what else can I say? Um, other, I, mean, I would really love to see an external plug somehow, like maybe a... A pigtail from here to somewhere so you're not having to mess with this battery pack every time you want to charge and unplug it should just be a simple plug it in and that'd be much better the foot pegs are pretty high when you're sitting on it, it's a low seat height I think it's like around what 30 30 inches or something 31 so yeah you're sitting you're sitting on your tailbone a lot because your your knees are so high when you're sitting on it. It's part of the uncomfortability factor. Um, brakes, the rear rear the rear brake squeals a little bit, mainly due to dust. I think if you push it, you pull the lever harder, the squealing stops. So I'm pretty sure it's just a dust thing. I personally would rather see. I would like to see the addition of a rear brake pedal on the right like a like a like a real motorcycle um i mean even atvs every atv i've ridden that i can think of sure you've got your front and rear brake on the handles but you've also got a foot brake it should be standard that's what everybody's used to um i think that's about it Power-wise, um, we have some steep hills on our on our drive up here. Hills that are almost like stair climbing <laughs> when you walk them. It'll get up them just fine, but it will not do it in the stroll mode. I think it will do it in in the what's the other one called? I think it'll do it in explore mode. It may slow you down to. 10 or 15 miles an hour but if you put it in sport mode so you get the full amperage um it'll get you up the hills as fast as i want to go up them anyway you know 17 to 20 miles an hour so power wise i think it's fine for just it's putting around it does its thing and it's not made to be a motocross bike it's not made for the highway it's not made for anything other than putting around and I think it does read it's it's pretty good at that. So I really don't have too much complaints about its maneuver, you know, maneuverability, getting around. It does just fine for what it's made for. I guess my biggest complaints, it definitely needs a better seat and the charging situation with easier access to the plug without having to you know unfasten the battery and shift it back to plug it in and that whole key thing is that's a pain and you know when the battery is charged up that relay shouldn't just sit there clicking on and off for hours and days on end until you remember to unplug it other than that price wise you know i paid when i pay 50 anyway just under six thousand fifty nine ninety five or whatever it was in the original pricing they promised me a second battery which i have not received yet so the six thousand I paid for it with the second battery, do I think it's worth it? Yeah, I think it's worth it. The current pricing at eight thousand, no second battery. I think that's a hard sell myself. Um, but anyway, I'm just giving you my feedback. You can make your own decision on whether it's worth it or not. When you're riding it, the only thing you hear is a chain, and it's you know it's not quiet. There's a lot of chains. Uh, 
quite a bit of chain noise as it goes around this front sprocket. And then when you're going downhill, oh, I didn't want to mention that. Downhill, they claim it has regen. I looked that up again, and it still claims it has regen. This thing does not have regen. You're going downhill, it just accelerates. There's no, there's no load on the motor. It just goes faster and faster. And when you're looking on the, dis the one mode in the display, it shows you how much amperage the draw is. When you're, the lowest it'll go is 0.4 amps. So when you're coasting down a hill, it never goes negative. It just stays at 0.4. This, they claim it has regen, but I would argue otherwise. I wish it had regen. Um, and then again, as for those other four arrows, I don't know what they have as for future plans, but right now, okay selects your mode and reverse. Once you're in neutral, holding this down button will put you in reverse as long as you're holding it. As soon as you release it, it goes back into neutral. Now there is an app that uh, Volcon has out on the App Store for both Android and iOS. And the app has, um, it has mapping built into it, kind of a terrain mapping where you get the train lines. It also shows you your motor RPM. And what else was in there? Still no odometer in there, so you're out of luck as far as how far you're going or went. But with the app, I suppose, I think it's designed to be mounted. You can mount it on your handlebars with some aftermarket phone holder. And then these arrow keys, you go left to access, actually you would go up first. Up will um, access the two screens on the app, one that has the map and one that has the motor RPM. And um, once you go up to access that, then you can go right or left between those two screens and then down exits back to your default app screen. The default app screen shows you a picture of your bike and uh, what mode you're in, neutral, um, uh, whatever, the three, the three drive modes, sport, um, explore, and whatever the third one is, mosey mode, um, the slowest mode, I can't remember the name of it. Anyway, it shows you those three modes in neutral, and then it has a small map. If you uh, touch the map or... Yeah, if you're on the app, if you're not using these, this D-pad here, if you touch the map on this on the app, it'll go full screen. And um, anyway, if you're using the D-pad, if your phone is mounted on the bike, up would access the, the I call it the second screen, which is going to show you your speed, your motor RPM, your battery percentage, um, what direction you're heading, and I believe there's a little mini map at the bottom. Not positive on that. Anyway, and then you could arrow to the right will bring up the full screen map. Arrow to the left brings you back to that previous screen, and arrow down will take you back to your main screen, which just has your your drive mode and the mini map. Um, so other than the map and the motor RPM and which direction you're heading, those are the three things that the the phone app bring you that you don't have just on the display here. The range seems to be, well, the way I've been riding, it's a lot of up and downhill, steep dirt roads. You can count on 15 miles. There is no odometer, so I can't be super exact with it, but around 15 miles is all you should count on for range. And, you know, if you're on the flat and level, I'm sure you could go further, but... 15 miles is what I figure. So, well, since I don't have a phone mount, I don't have, I don't have any good way to hold this phone. So I'm gonna sort of ride one handed to give you a little bit of uh, experience. You'll be able to hear a little bit of the sound anyway it makes. So let me get started here. Okay, here on the dirt road, there's a slight incline here. And let me see if I can hold this, not too... All right, here we go.
And we're at the top. Eh, we're almost at the top. It levels out here. Let's go up to the top of the hill. Crest of the hill, and this is a really steep hill. It is no fun to walk up. And here I am riding down with only the front brake. Fun. I don't know what grade this hill is, but. Certainly steeper than anything you're gonna find on a public road. Well, except for maybe San Francisco Lombard Street might be this steep. So obviously you could go quite a bit faster if you had both hands on the handlebars, but uh, I'm not planning on committing suicide today, so we're going slow. And let me turn around and go back up the hill. Okay, made it. Oh, we're not at the bottom, but we're near the bottom. And we'll try going back up this monster hill. One handed. No, I'm not giving it much throttle, just I don't want to go too fast with one hand. Hopefully that gives you a bit of an idea of what it's like to ride it. It's not silent by any means, but it's certainly quieter and a lot less vibration than a than a motorbike. Well, I guess this is a motorbike. Than an ice bike. And that's it. Hope that answers some of your questions. <laughs>